and to discuss with you uh, various aspects of our work. Um, you know, I came to the United States in 1965 and uh, have witnessed the evolution of the Islamic community or the Muslim community in this country. Uh, at that time, there were very few uh, immigrants, uh, most of those who were uh, Muslim here and the association of Islam in this country at that time was with the so-called Nation of Islam, the Black Muslim Movement, led by then Elijah Muhammad, uh, whose most famous followers included uh, Malcolm X and Muhammad Ali, the boxer. Um, but after the 1965, 1967 Immigration Act in the United States, large numbers of Muslims immigrated from uh, the classical uh, historical Muslim majority countries, the Arab world, South Asia, India, Pakistan, Southeast Asia, Turkey, you name it, West Africa, Senegal, etc. So the, the, the Muslim community in, in uh, the United States and New York, which is a microcosm of the United States, really represents a cross section of the global Muslim community. So we have in the United States, um, Sunnis, Shias, all the madhabs, all are represented in the United, in the United States. And all the strands of, 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 of practice or of thought uh, that existed in the Muslim world uh, exists in America. So the United States is in effect uh, like a, um, a, uh, a cross section of the whole Muslim world, which, which you see in, uh, in, 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 in the Hejaz in Mecca and Medina during the time of Hajj, but only for the time of Hajj, you know, you have like a, two, three million people from all over the world. Whereas here we have them permanently res resident in the United States. I see. This has created, of course, many opportunities as well as challenges uh, to, the, to the Muslim community. Uh, the, 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 on the plus side, the United States is a country which actually um, believes in a God. In fact, the, even the, the, the found, foundational statements of the United States uh, accept the fact that that you know we are a, uh, that, that that man was created by a creator, and that the creator gave the human being certain rights. So constitutionally, the United States um, system of government uh, acknowledges the existence of a God, which has made it and and also acknowledges the fact that there are people of all parts of the world who are who have, have been allowed to emigrate into the United States. So the United States is today uh, perhaps the, the, um, the greatest example of a multicultural society. And the United States has influenced uh, Canada, Western Europe, Australia, New Zealand, uh, all of the Western world, in fact, in, in adopting uh, the, 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 the really fundamental principles, which really are, in my opinion, very much consistent with Islam and Islamic law and jurisprudence as well. One of the things that we have uh, to do here in the United States, is, in, my, in my opinion, is to replicate what our ancestors did when Islam spread from the Hejaz to what were then not yet Muslim societies. So when May Islam I just spread... interrupt you for a minute? Uh, sure. Um, there, you just mentioned something very interesting that the laws here are in keeping with with the with the with, with, with Islamic jurisprudence. That's a, that's a very important point uh, that you make. Uh, you know, on a on a on a larger paradigm level, the general thought in Islamic circles is that 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 we're in 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 we're an opposing force in some ways. But you know, I just would just like you to elaborate on that as you as you go on. So. Sure. You see, there is a, you know, we people in general uh, tend to adopt myths. We have some kind of right. collective thoughts which are actually not quite accurate. Um, because of political differences, uh, you know, people have, uh, have assumed that, that America in general is against Islam. No, yes, I mean, uh, America may, may, may have been politically, you know, battling certain societies or like, you know, Saddam Hussein in Iraq. These are political issues and they have existed even between Muslim majority countries that have, you know, that have taken opposing sides. 
we've seen, for example, Saudi Arabia and Qatar, you know, a few years ago. They're, they're, both, they're both Muslims and both Wahhabis, and yet there was some political tension between them. So the po political issues aside, but, but political issues tend to create a lot of tensions. But if you take that aside, um, much of the beliefs, the line item values that, that Americans practice and America practices are very much in sync with, with Islamic values. In fact, many of my Muslim friends say that they consider America, who live in America, they consider America to be the best example of, a, of an Islamic state, quote unquote, in terms of values. Okay. So that's, that's, that's the issue. However, having said that, one of the things that our ancestors did when Islam spread from the Hejaz to let's say, you know, ancient Egypt, uh, Persia, um, South Asia, India, the Indian subcontinent, is that they had to adapt some of the rulings so that they would, they would mesh well with those societies. And this led to the development of what we call the madhahib of fiqh in Islam. You know, so we had Imam Malik, for example, in Medina. Medina was a very homogeneous society. But when Islam spread to, let's say, Iraq, Iraq was very multicultural, multi-religious, multinational, multi-ethnic, multilingual, etc. So when you look then at that, that, that the um, uh, um, Imam Abu Hanifa, they had to contend with different issues, with a more, more, more uh, variable society. And so for the, you find that the rulings of Imam Abu Hanifa tended to match better a, a multicultural society. So the, the Hanafi madhab spread through there to, to the north, to what is now in Turkey, to Central Asia, to South Asia. Um, and of course, even within those countries, they evolved further. So Hanafi madhab in, 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 in India and Pakistan evolved a bit differently from the Hanafi madhab in Turkey, for example. And then you had, of course, in Malik's uh, madhab spread through much of North Africa. Imam Shafi'i, who was mainly in Egypt later and in Syria and, and, and in Yemen and in Southeast Asia, uh, his madhab is, is more influential there. So, but these are not, these are issues which are relatively minor, but important. Um, an example I gave in one, of, in one of my writings is that the Quran says, for example, that uh, when the time for the Friday prayer is called, leave off your work and uh, and, uh, and go to the prayer, and then after that you go back. So as an example of this, and, and in Saudi Arabia, for example, all businesses shut down. Okay. But in other countries which have significant minority non-Muslims, the business doesn't shut down, stores are open and everything. So the question is, is a transaction conducted at the time of Juma valid or not? The Quran, is, the Quran is silent on this. Okay, in Saudi Arabia, it's definitely invalid, you know. Whereas, whereas in 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 other countries, they they, they say yes, a a a a, 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 a business contract that is uh, that is done at the time of Juma prayer is valid. So these are issues where there can be more than one opinion. But in a given in a given geography, you have to maintain one opinion because otherwise, you'll have you know you you cannot you cannot have a a law that will be deemed to be binding on the that society. Okay. So there are examples of, uh, of, of things which, 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 and you have these differences in areas where there's a potential for different interpretation in areas of, of, of business contract law, in, in some areas of, uh, of in, inheritance, laws of inheritance and, and so forth. So what we, what I feel we need, uh, and I've felt this need here in America, uh, and also in Western societies in general, is that we need to have also a fiqh, an American fiqh, a jurisprudence, which deals with, with a number of these issues so that we can mesh with American law and also have a system that is binding. In fact, that is one of the projects that we, we are working on and hope to, gain, to get, gain some patronage in funding for that. The idea of developing an Islamic, an American Islamic fiqh and developing an Islamic court system that would, uh, that would hear cases in personal status law by Muslims and render uh, uh, decisions that will be binding 
if such a court is established under the American Arbitration Association system, so you have arbitrators, then that such decisions would be binding and enforceable by the local uh, political, uh, you know. That'll be that'll be real but, pioneering work and much needed. It uh, is, Officer, If you could if you could elaborate more on you have lived this. You have lived this pluralistic uh, 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 Islam uh, uh, that is not only just accepting of all faiths, but my sense is, and you know, I may be, I I, I may not be putting it in in correct terms. But um, uh, you know there is a there is a spiritual togetherness. I think that's where it starts. For the lack of a better term, a spiritual. By that I mean not just practice the rituals, uh, you know, doing things together, but they're on a conceptual spiritual level. Could you just elaborate on that? How you have tackled that issue and put it into practice here? Sure. Well, essentially, it starts with the nature of what it means to be human. Um, you know, we can look at and define a human being from what I call the, the, the Earth-centric or geocentric perspective. We tend to look at ourselves as, as Pakistanis or Egyptians or, you know, uh, Germans or French, uh, as Muslims or Christians or Jews. We define ourselves as belonging to this clan or that tribe. But if you, if you ask yourself the question, how does Allah define a human being? And Allah defines a human being by a creature that was created in his own image. Allahu Adam ala surati is one of the hadith of the Prophet. Allah created Adam in his image. And now what is this image lie? This image lies in the human soul, in the human spirit and in some of the capacities that Allah has bequeathed to the human being. So every human being, no matter if you're black, white, yellow, brown, no matter what your clan or tribe or national identity is, we all share in a, in a common spirituality and in a common set of characteristics that have been God-given. A divine construct. Yes, constructed by divine, but also constructed in a divine manner, in a manner that reflects divinity itself. So the human being, because Allah says also in the Quran, ruhi, and I breathe into him from my own ruh, my own spirit. So the human soul contains something of the divine and DNA, if I can use that expression. It is this that that defines the common denominator of all and every human being. And because religion in the, in the general definition of a religion is about bringing the human being closer to God, it is something which every human being has the potential to access. And this is why the importance of of spirituality in religion is critical and is necessary because the human being is fundamentally of a spiritual nature. Because the human soul, because the human soul has something of a divine DNA, the human soul is indestructible. The human soul does not die. Death is the, de is the permanent departure of the human soul from the human body. The human body goes back to the earth and it decays. But not the extinction of but, the soul itself. But not the soul. The soul goes back to the creator. So every to be effective has to have a spiritual emphasis and spiritual dimension. This is why the spiritual dimension Islam is also a very critical one and an important one and is emphasized. And the practice which has tended to emphasize this in the history of Islam developed into what is called Tasawwuf or Sufism. Just as the jurisprudence which was developed by the Muslim scholars and by the founders of the Madhahib developed into the Madhahib of Fiqh 
and become institutionalized as madhab of fiqh and a jurisprudence and a court system, etc., in different countries. Analogously, the spiritual dimension and some souls who are very, very gifted spiritual, spiritually, like, you know, Al Qadr al Jilani, Chishti in India, uh, Shadili in, uh, from Morocco went to Egypt, uh, and so forth. Um, were, were founded what became known as, as you might call, schools of tasawwuf. Okay. You know, or they call them orders, spiritual orders, um, tariqas. So this is the, how, how the, 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 the turaq of uh, Sufism evolved in Islam. But its roots are in the Quran, and in the Hadith, and in the practice of the companions. Yeah. Could, you, could you Quran, elaborate more on that, please, in the Quran yeah. and the Hadith? Yeah, the Quran says in Surah Al-Ahzab, Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu, uzkurullah dhikran kathira, wa sabbihuhu bukratan wa asila. O you who have believed, uzkurullah, remember God with a lot of remembering. A lot of, do a lot of dhikr. It's a commandment. Wa sabbihuhu bukratan wa asila. You know what sabbaha means? We have, you know, tasbih, we have tasbih. This is, you know, to repeat and hymn God's names morning and night. That means at all hours of the day. These are commandments. And the Prophet and his companions did not ignore these commandments. We have a, the beginning of Surah Al-A'la. Sabbih ism rabbik al-A'la. Aladhi khalaqa fasawwa. Sabbih ism rabbik al-A'la. Means glorify or hymn the praises of your exalted Lord. Wa min al-layli fasabbihu wa adbar al-sujood. And do tasbih to him at night. And at the end of the sajda, of the sujuds, of the prostrations. These are Quranic examples where Allah commands us, not say it's a good idea if you do it, commands us, do this. Remember God without remembering. Do tasbih. So dhikr and tasbih are Quranic commandments. The Prophet, the hadith where the Prophet entered the mosque and there were circles of, of his compa of companions doing dhikr. And it, it said, the hadith says, it, that was like a buzzing background. The sound of the, the people doing that was like a buzzing of the humming of bees. There was another hadith of an elderly gentleman who came to Prophet and said, you know, I'm too old to perform all these prayers and all these rituals. Can you give me something which I can do? The Prophet didn't crit criticize him. He said, repeat the name Allah, repeat Allah until your tongue gets numb. Now, this hadith has been taken by, by Sufis to, re to, to represent not only the idea of doing dhikr, repeating Allah's name, but also it is, it is indicative of the hal. Because when, uh -huh. you, when you reach that state of, this, of altered consciousness, you will feel things like your tongue getting numb or your you know, tingling sensations in your body. So there's a physical stomach. expression, as it yes. is in, in many, many different traditions. You know, sometimes it takes the form of raks or dance. Sometimes yes. it takes the you know physical form of movement. physical sensation. Exactly. So these are all examples from the hadith which which endorse and confirm the authenticity of the performance of dhikr. And then there are also many instances because the prophet's companions, the prophet sometimes gave specific instructions to specific individuals. There's a hadith of a, one of the companions of the prophet who came to the Prophet and described him something, and the Prophet instructed him to make sure that he performs his Fajr prayer on time, meaning before sunrise every day, that he goes to sleep in a set of wudu, and that he fasts three days of every month. Now, this is an instruction the Prophet gave, not generally to everybody. Mm -hmm. So the fact that the Prophet also tweaked the, 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 the religious and spiritual practice of individuals, say Allah to your tongue is numb, uh, you know, uh, fast every three months. Every, he didn't give this to everybody, but to, he, he, would, he would prescribe to certain companions certain spiritual practices. I see. Or religious practices, which is exactly what the Sufi master does to his murids. Because uh -huh. not everybody... Not everybody is on the same level. You know, there is the, there is, I mean, even the Quran 
describes people into the people of the left, Ashab al Shimal, and the people of the right, Ashab al Yameen, and Al Muqarrabun. The Muqarrabun are the intimate ones to Allah, the ones who are near. Correct. So, what differentiates the Ashab al Yameen from the Muqarrabun? And this is, and sometimes in, 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 in Sufi language, you talk about the Hawam, the common folk, and the Hawas, that means the, the elite or the special people. Now, there are those who are gifted in spirituality. Those who are gifted in, in, in intellectuality, like, you know, Imam Shafi, for example, and his writings on, on jurisprudence are, I mean, in fact, he was the one who created the very structure of Usul al Fiqh. Correct. Uh, so there were analogously people who are very talented in, in, in spirituality. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and these are the ones who were the founders of the, uh, of the tariqas, of the spiritual tariqas. And, Allah, and they were inspired, Allah inspired them with, uh, with formulas, formulas of dhikr, which they then wrote down and they taught their, uh, their followers to, uh, to, to recite and to perform. And the proof of the dhikr, dhikr is in the effects that it has. When a person performs dhikr, they feel that, that difference. They feel this, this spiritual vibration and this spiritual energy. And they feel that, they, that, their, that their faith is growing and evolving. So I always tell my murids, if you don't feel anything, then it's not working for you. So you have to test your own faith and, and test your own growth and your own evolution.